Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Jeff Pestridge. Welcome to uh, another P3D video and today we're going to do a little bit of a flight. Something a little bit interesting and um, I want to talk over something about P3D. In particular version 5.3 and something um, that uh, is pretty awesome that I've recently only just discovered. Means and it means um, massive difference uh, for, for the users in terms of you know, people who have a really high-end PC to those who have a very low-end PC. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to do a flight. Basically, we're flying here in Alaska. So I've kind of, uh, we've got the, we're in this part of the world of Alaska. And uh, we are doing a flight from this airport, which is P-A-E-D, to Anchorage, P-A-N-C, via this VOR so we're going to go up and then we're going to go down about 25 minute video uh, video or 25 minute flight so let's get going and when we hit cruise I will talk all about exactly um, how you can utilize your PC no matter what PC you've got your graphics card your memory your CPU to get the best performance out of it no matter what PC you've got and no matter what load that you're doing so I'm using a Carinata plane here, not exactly known for the the sort of fidelity, but really known for the visuals and actually can hit your sort of CPU and your VRAM quite heavily um, because of the high detail that goes into these things, you know, um, in terms of visual fidelity. They look fantastic, um, but underneath the hood, there's not much there. But... Um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, get inside the plane. We've just been fueled up, so we need to start this plane going. Um, so let's get her going, shall we? Uh, in fact, shall we call for a pushback? Let me, um, hang on, let me turn on the battery uh, and the avionics, and then we'll contact ground. Uh, let me turn that off, that off, and we're not going to need them. So, oh, we need the beacon light on and uh the position light so yo ground mate do you mind uh pushing us back please hello ground where is he where is he is he there hello anybody there can you push me back please mate the I don't know if there's anybody. Oh, Hello, Captain. here we, we go. Ready for pushback. Thank you. Yep, I'm ready too, mate. Parking brakes are set. You know, I'm. I'm. Everything's ready to go, mate. If you're ready. Oh sh! <laughs> Literally, just jump in my plane, mate. <laughs> what was that? What was? Departure checks completed. Is he? Bypass pin inserted. I don't know where he's gone. Let's get the rest of this monkey going. Right, open these up, ready to start the plane up. Uh, we'll turn on that. And we shall turn on all our auxiliaries and open up these. And make sure the these work. Yep, yep, and yep. So we'll be starting up the engines soon. So we'll put that one first cranked, because that's going to be going first. Okay, he's locking his gear. Um, I don't know which way I'm supposed to go, so do you know what, mate? Just uh, throw me that way. Release parking brakes, please. Uh, release parking brakes, Squire. They are done. Commencing push. Brilliant. All engines clear. Yep. Start at will. Oh, hello, mate. How you doing, Mr. Alaska? All right, starting the engines up now. So fuel boosts are on. This might be a bit loud. I'm not really sure if the audio level is. Right, here we go. Uh, so, throttle forward, uh, mixture rich, and start that engine, bad boy. Boom. She's firing. 
Right, next. Get that one going. And start that one. Boom. It's alive. Do a run-up test while we're pushing back. Not fully, though. We don't want to... Right, mixture down. Props. We don't want to be flying off just yet. Okay. Brilliant. So yeah, we're here in Alaska, and the Ted Stevens Airport we're going to is from, um, for, made for version 5, but it's one of those made, like, came from FSX days. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. I think we have, mate. I think we absolutely have. Confirmed. Mr. Brown, we have a good engine start. That's key for Sutherland. Definitely. 100%. I... He's going to unlock the gear and he's going to move away. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Well, did you just get run over, mate? Mate, look at him. He looks stoned out of his head. Mate, where are you going? Ghost. Patrick Swayze, that was. Tow truck disconnected. Right. Bypass pin removed. Okay. Right. Left is clear. Left right is, clear. is clear. Okay. Let's set up our navigation, shall we? So, our first VOR is... Well, our first VOR is one that I might not come up, actually. So, uh... 112.5. 112.5. And let's... We're not on VATSIM, but I will tune in the code for VATSIM, just because that's what I usually do. But we're not on VATSIM. Should we be on VATSIM? Let's go on VATSIM, shall we? Let's do it. Live dangerously, I say. I mean, I pff, controllers in the air or not? I don't know. We'll soon find out. Uh, call sign. Call sign's going to be P3D. Okay, P3D. That's the call sign today. <laughs> there we go. Right, that's that done. And no, we haven't got anybody in the area. There is our thing. Get them out of the way. Clear out the way. Right. And we's ready to rock. I didn't put my strobes on. Whoops a daisy. So that's all good. That's all good. That's all good. Um, let's set the propeller. Oh, actually, we're going to taxi. All right. Let's go find a runway. Let me have a look at the weather. I mean, this isn't really a serious flight. This is more of an explanation, and I kind of just want to get straight to it. But the weather here at the current location is 60... It's blowing 060. It's three knots, and the... Oh, yes. 1025 is the pressure. So let's set that correctly first. So we are correct. There we go. 200 feet off the ground, and I've got 177 elevation. Brilliant. Right, let's follow these yellow lines, shall we? Let's go! And we're off. Okay. So, like I said, um, for those who are still using P3D, like, I am a big fan of P3D, and for very good reason. Um, let's follow this yellow line, shall we? Um, the reason I love P3D so much is because it's so versatile. It's so flexible. You can actually do so much with it. If you don't like the look of it, you can actually change it to make it look better. If you don't like the sound of it, you can change the sound files. If you don't like any aspect of it, it can be changed. Like, I use the default camera system, and I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people prefer to use Chase Plane or maybe even Easy Dock. But I prefer using the default because it just has everything I need. It does actually miss, sorry, one thing. But it's not a big deal because mainly I'm in the flight deck. And it has everything I need within the flight deck. So uh, where are we? I think we're going down this way. So I'm pretty, you know, okay using the default camera system. And the default camera system is like designed or rather it's used or it is like doesn't take any performance away when i install chase plane um in the past and i don't know if it's true of 5.3 but it has been like when i first started 5.3 using it it takes literally half your frame rate 
So you, if you do a test on P3D and unlock your frames and just see how much frame rate your GPU will give you, man, it, like my PC, the build that I've got will give me at a default P3D level about 200 frames, right? Um, default landscape, default everything, default plane, uh, default camera, about 200 frames. And when I install Chase Plane, that goes down to like 100. Now, that might not seem like anything. Let me set the flaps. People might go, yeah, but that don't mean anything because you only need 30 to, for it to be a, a, you know, a steady looking sim. And that is true. But I like to have a lot of overhead because if you notice at the top corner, I target my frames at 60. That's my refresh monitor rate. But the frames probably are getting to 30, um, depending, depending on what's loading. And it depends on, like, you know, your plane and everything. At the end of the day, this frame rate and this VRAM can actually be set to, like, anything. You Like, I could actually turn my VRAM down to, like, 3 if I wanted to. Or my frame rate up to 60 if I wanted to. It really depends on how you set up your your plane. Or, your, sorry, you set up your plane? What the hell am I talking about? How you set up your sim. It really depends on that. Like, the graphics card settings like that you set in your GPU control panel. It really depends on that. It really depends on the settings you set in the menu of P3D, like which ones you choose. And we're gonna go through all that in flight. And I'm gonna show you how it doesn't matter what kind of PC you've got, you can actually get the performance you want just by the way you set your system up, okay? And this really does go down to Windows 10 as well. So here we go. Right, full mixture, full props. Uh, we're gonna unlock the gear and we're gonna set our course for uh, it doesn't look like the thingies come in so we, we, we haven't actually got a VOR to lock onto so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the one for this airport which is 113.5 right so that's this airports ICAO code and we're gonna backtrack from it so if we set this as a back course when we take off it then should come into view for this airport i mean to be honest it should have come into view by now to be honest right let's uh open up our cow flaps set set right guess what guys rock and roll power set and we're off now one thing I am recording at the same time I'm using my sim so performance for me is going to be slightly lower than it is normally I did this exact same flight last night without recording and I was getting 30 to 40 frames I'm recording a video now I'm getting like 25 to 30 so Bear all that in mind when you watch this video. Right. Wheels up. And here we go. We're off. Let's set this thing for takeoff. We flaps up. Beautiful. There we go. A nice takeoff. Beautiful landscape. Right. Right. So the back course hasn't come in. Rip. So let's try the next VOR again. And that one has come in. Beautiful. So let's flick this sucker around. And. Oh, which way is it going? That way. Okay. I'm going to set an autopilot so I can concentrate on other things. So, uh, heading and pitch. And uh, that's set right. Lock the landing gear. And let's start our turn to the 
next way point. There we go. And we're off. Bye bye airport. miles to run and everything seems to be going good so strobes we'll leave the landing lights on uh, can't think of anything else here yeah okay power has been set mixture is we can start thinning a bit And I'll bring us back in cruise. Do you know what? We just uh, we just do it now. To be honest, we don't need to wait till cruise. Let's just do it. Right. So. Let's say you've got a potato, let's say you've got the best PC in the world, it really doesn't matter because P3D has been updated to a point now where you can actually configure your GPU, your CPU and your memory usage for your SIM. So in the old days, P3D versions up to literally 5.2 almost, you know, would probably use a little bit more of your CPU than your GPU by design, depending on the settings that you've set in your in your graphics tab here. So, um, and what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot of these so they're not up constantly and we can get back into the sim. And then I'll display these um, like now when we're in the sim. So, depending on your settings that you set, will depend greatly on the visuals that you see. And that is the brilliance of, well, any flight sim really. Allowing you to tailor your flight sim to um, your PC hardware. So, effectively, you could use whatever of your CPU to whatever of your GPU to whatever your memory. But, like I said, in the past, it's been restricted in the CPU area like where it'll just nail a core and it will use more maybe of your CPU. And you had to, in the old days of FSX and P3D, you had to have a really good CPU and your graphics card could be okay. 5.3 has allowed you to actually affinity mask your CPU so you can specify the cores. And not only that, use however much of your GPU you want. So, for instance, you could have it set to where you're only using about 30% of your GPU and you're using loads of your CPU, right? And also, you can literally increase your GPU usage and shrink your CPU usage by the way you set up your SIM usually generally and this will very greatly depend on the area of the world you're flying in so right now my my vram has gone slightly down and my frames have gone up to like nearly 40 um, but that's more to do probably with the fact that i've taken off and i need to actually level off let me just level off this plane there we go and we'll slow her down a bit we got nine miles to go. Um, the fact that I've actually taken off is probably the reason why my CPU and GPU have have gone down. But um, you like I, I what I've done, what I did in my in my uh, GPU is I turned off the vertical sync and unlocked my frames. So basically, the sim is now going to utilize as much of my GPU as possible to lock in the frame rate to forty, which, as you can see, it's actually doing a lot better job of now. 
Obviously, that's going to increase the load on my GPU, which was before around 30%, and now it's at like 50%. My CPU usage has gone down slightly, and you can tell in the fact that these were all literally blocks of blue before, and now they've got lots of spikes, and my CPU usage has gone down. And all I did was turn off the vertical sync to my frame rate in the GPU, so my frames were not locked to a specific number, and then told that the same value in the uh, settings for the CPU to say, don't, you know, just don't worry about the frame rate. That basically means, you know, um, unlock it and the CPU just doesn't try then to do anything. And uh, luckily, NVIDIA are smart enough to kind of put that same block thing in here. So my GPU will never try and get above 40 now. And as you can see, it doesn't. It doesn't try and spike to 60 like I had it set before. Fidelity-wise, it doesn't actually seem to have made any one bit of difference to the landscape around. It still looks like the same landscape to me. But I've got much more smoother flight. I've got less VRAM. I've got more frames. Who knew? Now, if I reversed everything that I just said now, so we put the, the VRAM back on. like that the GPU is now trying to make 60 frames every second to match my vertical sync of my monitor so this number will try and go above you know 60 uh, sorry above 40 up to 60 now because that's what I've instructed my GPU to do and if we untake this off and put a limiter and say hey CPU you try and do the same and do that I've just lowered my frame rate and increased the usage of my CPU. Well, not by much to be fair, but decreased the usage of my GPU. By actually locking my frame rate and trying to set a number, like, means that your GPU is actually going to do less. Because it's overridden by what your CPU is going to do. So the idea is keep it unlocked so your CPU isn't even worrying about it. But don't use the V-Sync in here because this is how your CPU will try and V-Sync it. But set it in your GPU. But not by the vertical sync either. By there, turn that off. It will actually increase your frame rate by turning your V-Sync off and having your verticals, your, your frame rate set to a number in the max frame rate section. If you haven't got it, well, you can't really do that then, can you? But if you have got it, you'll have more frames, a smoother experience, and less stutters. Now, like I said, this is just playing with your CPU, your your VRAM and all that. So I said before how you could actually bind the C the CPU, you know, threads, uh, like the P3D to which thread. So if you don't do this, P3D will sit on core zero and then like on every other core or something after that. Whereas I've sat it on core two and three and five and seven, spreading out the heat load so Windows has Core 0, and any other apps will have these two. The reason I can do this is because I'm using hyper-threading, meaning that I've literally taken my four cores and used the full potential of them, rather than just half. A core, a whole core of a CPU, literally can be split into a virtual and a physical. And by doing that, it's like you're using the full potential of your CPU rather than by not doing it, you're using like, well, you're only getting four cores out of your system. Whereas by splitting it and d turning hyper threading on, you get an eight, which means more jobs can be done at any one time. Right, let's get back in. And I think we got to do a turn here because we're off course that going up. Yep, that's going up. So the next uh, VOR we're going into is 113.5. So that is the next one. 113.5. And oh dear. 
Well, I don't know where we are then. <laughs> because uh, the VOR to the airport ain't coming up, baby. Oh dear. Right, so we're going to have to look at the uh, the satellite. GPS, is that in here? So right now, we're, I know we're moving away from the airport. So we need to... Well, we're literally... Uh, oh yeah, we just need to turn around, don't we? It's down here somewhere. So let's uh, turn this puppy around. We are at uh, 10,500 feet, which means the landing lights can come off. And we can turn this puppy around. Looks like the clouds are coming in. Now, I don't know any other simulator other than P3D that allows you to do what we're exactly talking about, where you can take certain jobs of P3D and go, the CPU will handle that, the GPU will handle this, okay? From what I understand, the Microsoft Sim and X-Plane are both internally coded to utilize your CPU and GPU, and you can't actually specify which, what will do what, okay? So, for instance, anything you set in this menu of the graphics here, in the view and panel settings, or in the terrain section here, is going to be sort of, and water and bathymetry, is going to be done by your CPU. So, if you want less CPU usage, turn some of these sliders down, okay? Um, the one, really, that you want to be setting in line with your GPU though, to what your GPU has to display at the end of the day, are these two settings. So I have a 1080 Ti, that's a high-end card, that's not like a super ultra card, so I set mine to the high settings. If you have a card that's less than a 1080 Ti, use the lesser settings of say, medium, or even low if you've got a low-end card. So look at these two settings as your graphical card ability. Um, I haven't got an ultra like card or whatever, so I'm gonna put that set to high. Five or 10 meters is the only two you really need to use. If you turn your mesh resolution to one, you're gonna have a lot of graphical errors at airport elevations. Two, there's not many uh, areas of the world that show two meter display resolution the airports usually contain their own mesh and uh it's only high profile areas so you're over using your cpu unnecessarily by setting it to two five or ten is all you ever need really for anything so what i tend to do is if i'm flying a plane that where i need a bit more frame rate i'll put it at 10 and if I'm flying a plane where, you know, like say the Caronado, I set it to five, not a problem. Um, these two, really, I would just say, doesn't matter what PC you have, set these to dense, because in version four, which is where a lot of the add-ons came from, dense in version five is very dense in versions four, three, two, one, and FSX. Like the meanings of these sliders were changed. So they're kind of like one higher than they should be. So you'll actually have very dense trees and buildings when you set it to dense. Now, it don't matter what uh, sort of height you put this at at the end of the day, because this is just not telling the sim to display a lot of trees or a lot of buildings. It's actually telling it to display a variety of buildings and a variety of trees. Density isn't really the right word that should be used here. It should be variation. Autogen vegetation variation and autogen building variation. This autogen scenery draw distance should be draw distance density. So this is how far out and how much you're gonna draw into your sim. This is really the only slider that you need to play with to lower your VRAM. So if we wanted to lower my VRAM, let's put that on low and go back in the sim. Obviously it's got to regenerate shit. And like my VRAM now is at 5.4 and I'm able to get like 40 frame rate. Right? So if we now turned this up to like a maximum setting without it crashing the sim. So we'll put it on high. 
and let's see what happens. Now, the fact is, this only really makes a difference when you're lower to the ground, because the higher you get in 5.3, certain things aren't going to load in anyway. So, like, it hasn't made a change because it hasn't loaded anything, but it has lowered my frame rate down to 30. But it's like, when you look at it, it'll load in. Okay, if you're not looking at it, it ain't loading in. So as we turn around, uh, I can't really see behind me, but that's fine. As we look down here, it, it's like it's fine. 40 frame rate, and if you that's why when you turn your camera, it will change the frame rate. Because, well, not only is it fa moving fast, but there might be more buildings over here. There might be more trees over there. You know, it depends on what it's loading as to what your frame rate and vram is going to be ultimately anyway thank you so much for watching this video um don't forget i give away 50 euros of sim market vouchers every single month um all you have to do being with a chance to win is be a subscriber to my channel leave a comment down in any p3d video and at the end of the month i will go live with a vlog and announce the winner and i hope this has helped you um, with your P3D setup and your hardware to either enable you to get more um, frame rate out of your sim or enable you to utilize your hardware better and save on crashes. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.